Hey, God bless you. Pastor Jeff, another daily word, capital W. Today is the 5th of August, 2020, and I'm turning to Proverbs 5, which is always tough for me to read because I'll tell you, my name is in there. I blew it. We don't have uh, the time. Well, we'll talk about it in heaven. I'll, I'll, go as long as you want, but I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. I can tell you that I lived out this proverb and did not heed what was in here. I did not know it at the time. I had never read Proverbs the time that I was, well, it, I used to say I was seduced by this lady. No, the truth was I, I guess I invited it. I didn't run from it as uh, Joseph did when uh, the uh, Potiphar's wife tempted him. He did the right thing. He ran away. And uh, I did not. So this one is always hard for me to read, but I hope you will read it. I hope you will read it and you will take it to life and you will take it to heart. I don't think this just applies to men. I think it could have it conceivably uh, apply to women, but certainly applied to me. I'm going to read it. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding that you may preserve discretion. Yeah, I didn't. And your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Well, yeah. At the time I was in the new age, at the time I was giving seminars, at the time I went up to Canada, I gave a seminar, stayed in the home of some very nice people. And later that night, uh, the, the wife of, of the host came to me and gave me a very passionate goodnight kiss way over the line inappropriate. And I did nothing about it. I didn't say, hey, cool it or no thanks or anything like that. If anything, I um, approved of it. I didn't, it didn't go farther than that, but I, I did nothing about it. The lips of an immoral woman drip honey. And her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she's bitter as wormwood. Yeah, it ended up that this very same woman and I eventually got married. And when I became a born again believer, she divorced me. I begged her to stay with me because by then I understood the idea of marriage. But even then, there were so many wrong things, starting with me, starting with me, starting with me taking the log out of my own eye. All I can tell you is that when I read Proverbs 5 every month, I'm reminded <sighs> the time to teach people, young people especially, the truth of this, young men especially, is when they're young, before they get uh, trapped into the ways of the flesh and the world. So verse four, in the end, she's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to earth, her steps lay hold of hell. And I'm praying for that lady, that she would find the Lord. That has been my prayer. That's actually motivated a lot of my ministry in repentance, that she would find Christ as, as I did during the that marriage to her, which was wrong to begin with. It was wrong. What I did was wrong. I should have never married her. It was wrong. I broke up her marriage. Verse six, lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Therefore, hear me now, my children, don't depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. 
And you know, let me just expand this to include for men, everything that has to do with pornography, or anything similar to that, that has to do with the lure of the flesh. That pornography has not been my issue, but certainly adultery was an issue and I committed it and I repent. And I pray that lady has forgiven me and I've forgiven her and that God, I know God has forgiven me because I'm confessing it. I have been confessing it for 25 or more years now um, in short, this is the way to teach young people. Avoid this, especially young men. So verse 8, remove your way far from her. Don't go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your ears to the cruel one. Lest aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner and you mourn at last. Yeah, I, in a way, I'm still mourning. What a mistake. What a disaster. Verse 11, and you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. The Lord wants us to live abstaining from sex until there's holy matrimony. And then that is the one person to whom any sex and flesh is permitted, period. Verse 12, and say how I've hated instruction and my heart despised correction. I've not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation and then these wonderful concluding verses, 15 to 23, drink water from your own cistern. Yes, in your holy matrimony, that is the place to have any intimacies with the flesh. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets? Question mark. Let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Yes, that's the way to do it. As a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. Paul. Oh. And always be enraptured with her love. Yes, that's God's plan for holy matrimony. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? Oh, this is so key. Verse 21, for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. His own iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he's caught in the cords of his sin. She, he shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. <sighs> well, by a miracle. In July of 1991, even when I was married to this lady, and even at the reality that this was a failed, adulterous, wrong marriage, by God's miracle, he touched me with a conviction of the Holy Spirit. I became born again. I repented. And the Lord has now placed me in a place of teaching repentance so he can restore all that the enemy has stolen. That's one of his names. He is a great restorer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray there would be truth here that would sink in, especially to young men, to follow your wisdom and your instruction and to protect and be abstaining from sex until you provide the perfect spouse, the complementary wife, and enter in with holy matrimony. And at that point, Lord, let that love last forever. God bless you.